Hey guys, it is Wingy here and welcome to a video that has been a long time request from many different people and I have already kind of answered this somewhat in Q&As before but I thought in this I'd give a little bit more of a detailed response but before we get into it, as always, as I keep saying, I want to hit 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year so if you do enjoy the content, hit that subscribe button and I'd love you forever. But how do you start watching classic Doctor Who? Like I said at the top of this video, a lot of people have asked me this question over the years, to be fair, even since I started my channel. And I think some people think that the obvious answer is we'll just start from the beginning. And yes, that is an option, but there are three ways in total, in my opinion. I think whoever you speak to, they will tell you, well, this is how I did it. So there isn't like a definitive, this is what you should do. But in terms of where to go, to watch classic Doctor Who, again there's a few options. The main one would be obviously the DVDs and the Blu-rays but if you can't afford that there's stuff like Brickbox which unfortunately this video is not sponsored by because that would be fucking awesome. But with Brickbox obviously you don't pay as much compared to like the DVDs and the Blu-rays but you get pretty much all the available classic series stories on there anyway with other bits as well so I guess it kind of works out. But in terms of how to start because I think a lot of people get confused because it's like well you know there's so many doctors there's so many eras so many styles like where do I go and like I said the obvious answer is start from the very beginning and that's where we'll start I mean it's the obvious answer for a reason because you're just gonna start from the very beginning of the show and then make your way along this for me would be the best way to do it and would be the way that I personally would have wished I did because at least then you get a general vibe and feeling of how Doctor Who began and then you see it evolve over the years because going from an unearthly child to even 10 years into the future, Doctor Who became a very different show. What's also great about it is even though the first Doctor's era for me personally is my least favourite out of the classic era, it's great seeing the origins of the Doctor, the TARDIS, the Daleks, the Cybermen, all these different things that would later on become staples in the show. And Unearthly Child Part 1 is one of the best individual episodes of Doctor Who you are ever going to see. The rest of the story is not, but that first part really is. And then of course, once you get past the Hartnell era, you've got the Troughton era, which unfortunately, well, to be fair, like bits of the Hartnell era, isn't complete. But Troughton's era, for me, starts to feel more like traditional Doctor Who as we know it, even though Hartnell's Doctor Who is technically the traditional one, but as in how Doctor Who ended up is more like the Troughton era, if that makes sense. Probably doesn't, but there you are. And then you go from there to the Pertwee era, which again is very different, the Tom Baker era, which has multiple different styles within it, and you just go from there and you see how it evolved. I think the only drawback, at least from my perspective, like I said, I'm not a massive fan of the Hartnell era, so I think some people might find that a bit jarring because the pacing and the way that the stories are made isn't the same as the modern era as an example, but then again, none of classic Who is really. But I think some people might get put off by the original era from a modern perspective. That's not always gonna be the case, so I don't want people saying like, oh no, but I started with the Hartnell era and I loved it and I'm only like 15. That's fine, but I just think if you're used to modern television and you haven't really seen much old TV, it might be a bit jarring. Whereas eras later on, I don't think you necessarily have that issue as much. But that's just my opinion. But is this the best option? Yes. If you want to get the full effect, yes. In the same way as like if someone said, oh, how do I watch the Star Wars saga? Well, you're not going to start with The Last Jedi, are you? Oh, you might, I don't know, but you shouldn't. However, having said that, the other piece of advice that I've always said to people is if you want to get into classic Doctor Who, either start from the beginning or pick an era and go from there. Now, this could literally mean any of the Doctor's all seven of them. I mean, there's the TV movie, but that's just like, save that for the end anyway. So you can literally pick a doctor that you like the look of, or you've seen clips of them, be like, okay, I'll, I'll watch this era and I'll see what I think of it. And then I might go back and revisit some of the others and then obviously go on to the later ones. The problem with this though, is there's not too many that are a clean slate. There's only two, in my opinion, and that's Hartnell and Pertwee. All the others, they carry over significant elements from the previous era, and well, I've literally just thought of this off the top of my head. I think I'm right in saying that, barring Hartnell, obviously, because he's the original, Pertwee is the only Doctor where his era doesn't have the predecessor's companions still around. <laughs> that is right, isn't it? Because Troughton has Ben and Polly, Tom has Sarah, Davison has Nissa, Tegan and Adric, Colin has Perry, and McCoy has Mel. How did I not realise that? Did anyone... 
Was that like common knowledge and I've just clicked? Like, what the fuck? So yeah, in that regard, it's best to go with Pertwee in terms of like a clean slate. Also, it's in colour. Not that I think black or white and colour makes a difference because it's all just the same to me anyway. But I know that some people get a bit weird about black and white, even though Trout and Zero is like one of the best in the show. But I think the start of Pertwee is the main comparison that I can make if you're only familiar with the modern era is the 11th hour in terms of yes it sort of still feels like the previous run but it does also feel like a clean slate going into the matt smith era that's very much what spearhead from space feels like and season seven as a whole irrespective of what you think of it it does feel like a new fresh start for doctor who not just because it's in color so yeah in terms of that start with pertwee but if not i mean if you like the look of davison from like time crash or something go for that if you like the look of collins era go for his. If you like the look of Tom's, go for his. I mean, if obviously if you start from Hartnell and you like the look of his era, then that's like the first two points ticked off my list, isn't it? So you're doing well. But like I said, the problem is with that is you do sometimes miss a couple of things because occasionally there'll be references to things that happened in the past and you might not pick up on them. They won't necessarily be crucial to the plot or anything. Maybe the only one in that case would be Davison's because it's like a trilogy of stories with only one Davison story being in it and the other two being in Tom's. But apart from that, you know, you won't really miss too much it, they are all pretty much self-contained stories now the other option for me is the thing that i did which is pick a random story and go from there now it wasn't necessarily in the sense of oh i'll start with this story in the random of this series and then follow on from there i literally just pick and chose a story each week so my first story was the hand of fear you may not be aware especially if you follow me on twitter then i went from that to Earthshock. then from that to like the three doctors then from there to revelation of the daleks then from there to Dalek Invasion of it, like I, I just bounced around basically. And the thing is, this was really fun because when I was a kid, I was just excited to see how the different eras of Doctor Who were going to be different. So like I'd never seen any classic Doctor Who before. So when I first saw The Hand of Fear, I was like, whoa, I want to see what the TARDIS is like. I want to see what the title sequence is like, the music, the whole vibe of the show. And then the excitement of Okay, so now I've gone to this era, I've gone to the next one, I have the same thing again. How is things different? And don't get me wrong, like I say, because the classic era is relatively self-contained, barring a few exceptions, you can kind of get away with that. But with hindsight, looking back, I feel like I never got the full effect because I would miss different references and I would miss certain things. Similar to what I was saying about just starting from a Doctor's era and going from there, it's like that again, but on an extreme. It's not impossible to do, and I know that for a fact, because I did it, but this is also an option. Just sort of pick and choose which stories you think may be the best, or just pick a story from each Doctor and then keep randomly picking, because why not? I think for me at the time, that was what I had to do because not all of Classic Who was readily available. It was like only a third of the DVDs were out at that point, maybe even closer to a half, but sort of in that sort of space. So it wasn't like I could just start at Hartnell's era and then watch all the way through because not everything was released yet. Whereas I know that there's still stuff missing now, but the reason why it's missing is because it physically doesn't exist and they're currently animating everything. But yeah, that is my somewhat helpful guide of getting into classic Doctor Who and how best to approach it. Like I say, I understand about budgets and people can't afford all the DVDs and the Blu-rays and what have you. So BritBox would be your best option in that. There's also other things that you can do that I legally can't say, but if I say that you can go on the internet, that's as far as I'm gonna say, you know what to do then um, that's an option also. I don't know if the BBC watch these or not, so I'm not gonna physically say it and I'm not liable because I, I, all I've said is go on the internet. You don't know what for. In the comments below though, I would be curious, how did you first start watching classic Doctor Who? I'm assuming some people say, oh, well, I was a kid and it was on TV, but as in for a more modern audience going back to it, like, did you start from the beginning? Did you pick random stories like me? Did you just pick a Doctor and run with it? Whatever it is, let me know. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like on it, subscribe for more. Social media and Patreon links will be in the description as always. So if you would follow me on any of those things, I'd absolutely love you forever. But until next time, guys, you take care of yourselves. Goodbye.